it's a struggle. And not everyone makes it through. That's why today's framework is one of the most powerful, life-changing things. In fact, if we didn't have this, we wouldn't be here talking to you today. Really what we're talking about, to, uh, of course, is, is sales. Today is going to be a, a journey of mixed emotion. <laughs> um, number one, what we're going to be covering is one of the most powerful, game-changing, truly game-changing sales frameworks that has changed the trajectory of Sean and I's career and in and business. It's, it's one of the most powerful sales frameworks that we've applied uh, in our whole career in, in our business. So it's a, it's a big deal. And there's some emotion in this because of where we're at in our journey right now. And I'm going to unpack that today. So that sounds kind of interesting and like fun. Where this starts is rejection. It sucks. <laughs> Uh, you can't talk about sales without rejection. Is that a fair statement? Has anyone done sales here and not faced rejection? Because <laughs> I will shut up and listen to you teach the rest of today, <laughs> if that's the case. Okay. So, but this there's this is such a pivotal a pivotal thing. Rejection sucks, but you don't face it once or twice or five times or ten. And when you get rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected over and over, it actually becomes disheartening it like starts sucking the soul out of you so deep in your bones that you start to question your identity. Am I the only one or Sean and I the only ones that have ever felt like this? You know that it hits you so deep that you sometimes start feeling like this guy. After years of struggle, you look in the mirror and you might not even recognize yourself. You're like, no, like I used to believe that the glass was half full and life was good. I wasn't negative Nancy or Debbie Downer, but like after all the rejection, you start listening to what comes out of your mouth and you filter the thoughts that go through your head. And it's just, it's like, I've even talked uh, to some Flowchat members, like going through, going through sales and the sales process, especially new sales processes. It's a struggle and not everyone makes it through. That's why today's framework is one of the most powerful, life-changing things. In fact, if we didn't have this, we wouldn't be here talking to you today. Because how we all face and manage rejection changes the trajectory of where we go, not only in business, but also in life. You guys with me on this? It's even crazier some of the, for the parents here today or watching the replay, reliving this through your kids. Watching your kids walk through perceived failure or rejection, you're like, you just tripped. That's not failure. You don't even know what life is coming. <laughs> you don't even know what's coming your way, <laughs> right? But you can see their personality growing. And if we're honest, we're just a bunch of kids. Why ain't grown up? My opinion. <laughs> That's how I feel anyway. <laughs> okay. So what if I told you that the, you know, the framework and the thing that we're going to be going through today actually will protect you from rejection. In fact, you never have to go down that path again. I'm not saying you'll never face rejection. I'm saying that you never will be have to question your identity. You'll, you'll never feel less than. You'll never feel destroyed or disheartened, but rather that flame and that, that, that energy and spirit inside of you will ignite and never reside when you start applying the certain framework. In order for me to share this and give this to you today, we've got to go to this building. And please type in the chat. If you recognize this building, please put it in the chat. I'm just curious if anyone knows. But there was a legendary make or break moment. We've all seen the epic, you know, successes, but we've also seen people completely melt under pressure. There was a pivotal, legendary make or break moment that took place in this building in September 26, 1981. And I'm not talking about 22 time Grand Slam winner Serena Williams. She was born this day, but she wasn't born in this building. This building is the Astrodome of the Houston Astros. <laughs> and this is where this legendary make or break moment took place. And if anyone knows uh, in, in the 80s who was on the team, then you're going to know Nolan Ryan, who was a pitcher. And for all like non, you know, sports fan pitcher, the person that's on the mound that throws the ball, right? He was one of the most dominant power pitchers that the, the game will ever see, period. Not just my opinion. Okay. The reason I want to, I bring up him is because I played little league baseball. I'm a lefty and I was a pitcher and Nolan 
was one of the cool guys that I aspired to. The difference between Sean and I is he also played baseball, but he was good at it. <laughs> I just played little leagues as a pitcher. And, and I was recently re-inspired by his story a few weeks ago, seeing his documentary on Netflix. And I was like, holy crap, his story is the exact same journey that we are on right here today in business and in sales. And so I wanted to share the story because while we know him today, you can Google him and you can see all the accolades and everything uh, about him, but that's not where he started in 1965 with the Mets. He actually struggled for eight years in the majors before he was like even hit his stride. And the, the part that applies to us today that I want you all, all of us to catch is there's something very specific that convert, that made a huge switch in his, the trajectory of his career that I want to share with you. And when, and when, if you're thinking this, you're like, oh, Chris, poor him, eight years in the majors, wah. Let me tell you something about night, the 60s and 70s in the, with Major League Baseball. As it pertains to business, this is interesting. They went, In that stretch, there's ups and downs in seasons of struggle, fair to say. One of his wins, like there was a lot of sucking, like horrible, right, in the beginning. Switching teams, a couple different things. Okay, In 1969, Nolan Ryan comes in to close and wins the World Damn Series. That's the, anyone that knows base. That's the pinnacle of baseball. You know what he did the next week after he made ten thousand dollars that year, winning the World Series. It was somewhere in there, roughly. Okay, he went to go service your air conditioner and heater. So I'm just saying, in eight years of struggle, he's having kids. He's on the road constantly. That's rough on the marriage. He's making no money. He's working on on the off season. He's fighting it out. He has talent, but he's all over the place. Have you ever felt like your offers are all over the place? Have you ever felt like, what the heck am I selling? Or how am I going to get clients? Or you, and, and, and you don't even get to do your freaking thing full time because of relationships or because of health or because you have a, a job to actually keep the lights on. Well, so did Nolan Ryan. At heart, he was an entrepreneur. He was a visionary, just like us. And there's something to be said for those people that stick it out, that endure and persevere and make it through. It inspired the hell out of me. And, and there's there, there's huge pivotal moment of when what changed for him was he started applying some of the principles and techniques and frameworks that were established from the giants that came before him. And when he paired up with the coach, uh, with a different coach, in 1973, everything shifted for him. He did one of the most dominant things you can do in baseball, which is pitch a no-hitter. And for non-baseball fans, you might think, well, that's when no one hits it. Well, someone could technically get a hit, but they never make it on first base, which means that no one ever scores. It's basically like, I'm going to score. You got nothing. I shut you down so hard. Like it's one of the most dominant things you can do. And he didn't just do it once in 1973. He did it twice. And the next year in 74, he did it again. And the next year in 75, he did it again. He was on fire. When have we felt on fire with our business? We think the world's our oyster. We're going to like, just fig figure it out. We're going to crush it. Right. Okay, cool. We got the right framework of principles. We're going to make it. Well, the next year he, he didn't get the next, he didn't get another no hitter. And the year after that, and the year after that, and he found himself in a slump. We all go through ups and downs of business, yes? Do you guys hear what I'm, at, what I'm really saying? In our sales processes and our offers and our, in our career and our journey, it, we, we might know the right framework and it doesn't guarantee success. There's still the ups and downs, but we start trending the right direction. You guys with me? So I'm sharing a story, okay? So this pivotal moment happened in, 17, in September 26, 1981 with the Astros. One of the people, the giants, the greats that he was following was Sandy Koufax. He had four no hitters, the most the league had ever seen. And I want you guys to hear this through the lens of what, what's the equivalent for you? What's the biggest record thing that you've ever accomplished in this case, sales and business? What's the year that you've sold the most? Okay. That's where Nolan Ryan was at. 
And he was facing this moment of, am I going to break through and finally establish myself or not? Is anyone ever, do you guys feel like that today? Do you feel like you're done? Your moment's done. You've already accomplished your map. No, like that's why we're all here. We know there's more inside of us. The question is, how do we get it out? When he was started applying some of these frameworks, things shifted for him. And today, or in this moment, for him, he was now in the ninth inning. He was three outs away from pitching his fifth no-hitter, which would establish him as the only person in Major League hist ba uh, Baseball history to have five no-hitters, the most dominant thing you can do in the game. And the question is, was he going to fail? Was he going to close the sale? <laughs> That next agreement, that next big year in sales, you sell the business, you know, have a huge cash, whatever the goal is, was he going to do it? Was he going to close or was he going to crumble? For today, this frame, you guys want to hear the framework for today for sales? It's being an expert disqualifier. Being an expert disqualifier is the thing that will reshape how you think about sales, how you approach business. And at the same time, it will not just incrementally bring you more sales it will two and three and five x what you're doing because you rather lather rinse and repeat with being an expert disqualifier uh, so i'm going to cover through how we actually what this actually means how this applies to your sales process so you can take these actionable things today okay but before we do this i don't want to leave you hanging and i got to make sure that i i'm sharing sound <laughs> there we go okay the question is did he actually did he close or did he crumble? You guys want to see what happened? All right, here we go. <laughs> Can you guys hear this? This may be it. You see the fifth career. That might just look like for most people be like, okay, cool, Chris, like a bunch of white dude, old white dudes, like playing baseball, not super emotional or interesting. <laughs> when I look at people, I don't see their age and I don't see their skin color and I don't see their, their personality or the different like corks or approach to life or whether they love baseball or music or what food they love to eat. I don't see those things. What I see is the spirit that lives in them. And I'm so drawn and attracted to the people that walk up on the mound, that show up and deliver the pitch, and they do it day in and they do it day out, and they hold, they hold to the vision, they hold to the dream that they see, and they flow through that. So Nolan is that person. We are that people that, are, that have our vision. We're the, we're the crazy, we're not normal. Normal people strive for comfort or settle for comfort and they don't create and contribute and put together product and service and serve other people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a different type of person, whether it's a musician, actor, entertainer, entrepreneur that contributes, that sows and reaps. That is a different spirit and mentality and approach to life. And if you don't understand how to disqualify and weed out the garbage, in other words, if you start planting seed on cement or in rocks or in different areas where it's not in fertile soil and it does not grow, it doesn't just hurt the seed that dies, it hurts you too. That we all have given, we're all given so much time in, in energy and, ex, in, in skill and everything, right? It's important for us to be a good steward of what we were first given and plant that in a place that it will not only serve those who receive it, but continue to multiply and grow and serve more people at scale. Are you guys with me? That's part of the reason. I'm just, some of you, I'm gonna give some tactical things here. I know this is heavier story and theory, but some of you listening to this today or catching the replay on this, that's all you needed to hear because you can already tell, you already know that you're wasting too much of your time with clients that are squandering everything that you're putting out there, where you could be spending the same time with the qualified proper person that you can serve 
that will yield fruit that will go on and serve more people. It's not a funnel. It's an hourglass. You funnel down to qualify the proper people and they start serving more people, which starts to expand on the second half of the funnel. It's an hourglass, not a funnel. You guys with me? So let me give you, let me give you two filters. These are two filters that you can use, take with you today and apply within your business and your sales process. The first one is the power of no. Now, now he, he, hear, what I, hear what I'm saying today and not what I'm not saying. What I'm not saying is like, oh, well, I know, you know, I just got to say no to more things and then things will be better. You know, like that can be true. It is a good thing, but that's not what I'm saying today. What I'm saying today is wrap with as it pertains to rejection and sales we've all slipped into it i'm guilty of it too it's chasing the sale it's almost begging for the sale we're really no different than the the person maybe going through a hard time on the the curbside begging for for business or money or right, right? we're chasing the sale Okay, and then we get told no and no and no. We've lost before we started because we don't have the right principle and framework of how to approach it. So we're we're giving away our power today. Being an expert disqualifier, we get to take that power back. People no longer tell us no. We know what we are doing, and we are qualifying people through a set of criteria. We're going to tell more people no. Right? What sales? Well, I close about twenty percent. 80% of people say no, 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 no. We say no to about 80, 90% of people. We only take on the, the, the proper 10 or 20%. You see that framework shift? It's not just a mental shift. It's also an emotional shift, okay? Because now you're approaching this more like you're like an exclusive bouncer at a club. It's like, you got the keys to something freaking amazing where all the cool people hang out and they got, you know, free yo, you know, like uh, bottomless fro yo or whatever the cool thing you would have in like some crazy exclusive, you know, party. And, and here's the thing, there's only a hundred seats. You guys seeing where I'm going with this? We can only serve so many clients. I can't sell. I can't even, I don't even want everyone's business framework shift. I have to tell more people no than I tell yes and then, and then they get to come be a part of the, the exclusive club. Let me give you the second filter. The second filter is take what works and just do more of that. We've all heard that. Have we all not heard this multiple times? Okay. There's very few people that are excellent practitioners of this. Let me just give you a more personal example with Flowchat. Okay. We found what works. Connecting with people, finding people and connecting with them on social media, building a relationship in DMs, right? You've heard us talk through, you know, social media being the event and the DMs being the hallway and replicating what works in real life, but on social media. Okay, that works. Well, how do we take that and do more of that? Well, we're manually doing it. But what if? What if we could click just a couple buttons and do that faster? We could do more of that and do it in a systematic way where we actually, it's so easy and clear to do that we can scale, build a team of multiple people that understand what to do. And we can replicate those revenue generating activities to create a bigger, more desirable result. And then we, it gets so refined that other people are like, well, wait a minute. I hear what you're saying about sales, but like, well, how do you do that? Like, I want that. And then we have to... <laughs> Do more iterations to make it simpler and easier to understand. And you know what's funny about this? We're not done taking what works and doing more of it. The world has no idea what we're plotting. For 2023, that alone 2025, taking what works and just doing more of it. But let me, I like one more point on this. This is really important. This is really important. Think through your sales process right now. Think through the clients that you're serving right now. What are the parts of that surface that are the most wearing to you that don't are not yielding the best result for the client? What are those things? What are the top 20% of things of that service that are just like, oh my gosh, well, that's like, that, that's not even that hard. We recently went through this with one of our particular processes and memberships. And we're like, well, wait a minute. 
if people are struggling here, what if we just, you know, behind the scenes had our team start building the asset to when, when they hit subscribe and they come in, they just get the whole thing immediately. We're taking, we've like, and then this other part that we're really struggling with, what if we just didn't even offer that anymore, but we did this one part of it that people are loving. Now, if you heard what I'm saying and you've ever felt the weight of, of client work and, de and delivery, <laughs> you feel amazing. You feel light again. You're like, oh my gosh, hold on. I'm, I'm charging equal or more. I'm actually delivering and giving less, but what I am giving is being done so well that people are more excited about it, even though they're paying more for it. That's a pretty damn big deal. That's a career and business trajectory shifter. And what I've realized as, John, I didn't even get to tell you this part earlier today, crazy conversation. I talked to a bigger visionary and thinker this morning. <laughs> and when you start here, you take this principle of what works and you do more of that. When somebody looks you in the eyes and says, yeah, 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 like $300 million isn't a big deal. I can have that done in three days. You're like, huh? <laughs> it's, it's fun to see how this thought grows and, and truly works at all levels of entrepreneurship and, and business. That's, we just got to keep it there for today. All right. So these are the two filters, right? One is the power, the power of no. And the other is doing more of what works. But hopefully, I know we've all heard those, but hopefully uh, speaking through those filters and giving some examples give you clarity of how you can take that today and apply it. Because if anyone does nothing with what I'm saying right now, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> all right. Because I know every business is broken and I know there's a part of every process that is heavy and it's not serving you and it's not serving the client. So just don't do it. Do more of what's working so that you make more money and you feel better. I'm off my soapbox. I'll leave you with this. I went to the doctor recently. And overall, I'm, I'm good. It was, a, it was a checkup kind of thing, just so just to be clear. And as I'm going, I'm in this appointment the doctor's asking me a bunch of questions. I'm saying, you know, here's some of the things I'm feeling, here's what's going on, da, 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 right? And he's asking me more questions, more questions, more questions. Do you smoke? Do you, have a, do you have diabetes? Do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? And what hit me, I was like, he's qualifying me right now. And why I'm bringing it up today is if, if you struggle with maybe applying this don't think of yourself as a sales professional. Think of yourself as a doctor. You can, you can, <laughs> I love all doctors. My best friend's a doctor. <laughs> you can put your nose up a little bit higher. And, you know, you, you don't have to wear the white coat. You're now a doctor. You're an expert, <laughs> right? But there, the, 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 there's a lot to be said with the approach that's, that's very great. It's, I know what procedures and services, right? would best serve or treat the symptom or issue that's taking place. But if you're not in this specific criteria, this procedure does not serve you. Sales is not just about getting somebody to decide to give you their Visa or MasterCard number. It's understanding what result you create for somebody. And, and this is the freeing part, by the way, in what perfect world, like if you had all the money and resources and everything, like what could, what service could you put together? What would be required to put a service together to where it was almost impossible to not get somebody results? You see what question I'm asking? That's what being an expert disqualifier equals. It's ask, it's knowing that criteria and asking those questions to where, look, if you're this, per, if you're this business looking for these type of clients, like if we're selling Flowchat and, and uh, you know, lead acquisition, lead, lead generation, essentially, right? If you're this client or, or this business and you're looking for the X amount of these clients, what if I told you that in, and when you click this button, I could have thousands of those instantly imported into your pipeline. Oh my gosh, but you have to, you have to have, you have to sell your product for X amount or the numbers don't make sense. You have to, uh, 
do this daily activity. You have to boom, 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 boom. You go through the whole list. If you do all these things and you are this person looking for this outcome and result, then this is the right fit for you. And then when they do it, they get success. When Sean and I ran our, our mastermind, it, I was like, it was like, like 78 to like 83% success rate, 84, which, which usually it's like 12 to 20%. It's a lot lower. We had a really high one because of how we qualified up front. Okay. I, I know I'm like, I'm like hitting it hard, but feel empowered that it's okay to decline business. Some people are so afraid. It's hard to do. It's uncomfortable, but it's one of the most powerful freeing things. When you outline the criteria, you, you know what, if you can be this type of person, I know I can, we can win together. People will feel that in the sales call. You're no longer uh, begging. You, you, you keep all of the power as the authority in the framework, which also happens to build more trust and confidence faster, which leads to even more sales. It's a snowball effect, just like it was for Nolan Ryan. When he got with the right coach, had the right fund. He was wild. He was pitching all over the place. He could throw hard, but knew he wasn't consistent. But when he got the right technique and the right influence in his life, it directed, it, it focused him. It honed in all of his power to, to levels that the major league baseball you know, league will never see again. No one's going to pitch seven hitters. He went up, by the way, he went on to pitch a sixth and a seventh no hitter. No pitcher is going to do that again in the game. It'll be insane for that. To, part of part of it is how they do pitching these days. Like people don't pitch like the whole game. Anyway, so decline in business. It's a freeing, powerful thing. Here's your mission to end today. First, identify the most valuable parts of your service that are easiest for you to fulfill. Another word might be that you enjoy the most or the most fun. They're the area that you get the most results. Like maybe it's hard to do, but you know it's going to pay off really well for you and the client. So you do it. Just write that down today. Second thing is rework your front facing offer to communicate that refined service. Your temptation will, I'm just telling you, your temptation will be like, well, wait a minute. I'm offering like, I used to offer more for the same amount, but now I'm offering less and I'm offering the same amount. Or, or a little bit more like you have this internal struggle. Nobody else knows that. And you know what? I'm just telling you, this is true. Nobody else cares. They don't care about what it used to be or what it was, or even how the amount is what they do care about. And I know you'll know this is true because you feel the same. You care about receiving a multiple of the value that you gave. People don't buy a $10,000 program because they think it's worth $10,000. They buy a $10,000 program or service because they think and believe that it's going to bring them 50 or a hundred thousand dollars or more. They believe that the program is worth way more than 10,000, which is why they do the exchange. Okay. So focus more on value, not the combination of price and services. All right. So that's number two. Last one is set a limit and a and a special deal for the next X number of clients that will be getting access to the special offer. It creates urgency around what you're bringing to market, okay? So look, oh, I, wanna, I got this new thing, I wanna sell a bunch. Look, if you only could sell 10 or 15 of them, but they had to be the perfect criteria and you had, you know, you're, again, you're like that exclusive gatekeeper of this excellent experience and you're going and you're finding, okay, wait, is this the right person? Wait, can I ask you the, oh my gosh, you might be the perfect fit. Perfect fit for what? Getting everything you just said. It become, it makes the sales conversation much easier too. These are the three uh, homework items for you today. And um, hopefully this encourages you, inspires you to become an expert disqualifier. Mm -hmm.